In a recent discussion, the renowned investor Charlie Munger shed light on his unusual use of leverage in his investment strategy. Despite his historical aversion to leverage, Munger explained that exceptional opportunities compelled him to deviate from his philosophy. Let's delve into Munger's perspective on leverage and why he chose to employ it. Charlie, this question comes from Michael Gallagher. He says, according to company filings, it appeared that Alibaba shares were purchased with leverage, and when the stock price fell last year, he was seemingly forced to sell, he being you. Can you ask Charlie to confirm that it was bought with leverage, and if so, why would he do that, as it seems to go against his philosophy? I got several questions that were similar to that. Well, uh, yes, that's, it's true. I, I operated with no leverage for long stretches of my old age, and Warren's the same way. And recently I did use a little bit of leverage here and in another place because the opportunities were so ridiculously good, I thought it was desirable to do that. So that's, you're right, it's unusual for us, but we, we, we did find a few things. And by the way, if you go back early in my career, I used some leverage, I, I sometimes ask myself a mental question, I say, what is the appropriate percentage you should, of your net worth you should put it in the stock if you think it's an absolute cinch? Well, if you're the kind of fellow who's right and you, when you think something is a cinch, the answer is 100%, or maybe 150%, but nobody, in, that, nobody teaches people to think that way in finance. Charlie Munger acknowledges that he used leverage to purchase Alibaba shares, which is unusual for him and Warren Buffett given their historical aversion to leverage. Munger explains that they employed leverage in this instance because they believed the investment opportunities were exceptionally good. He also mentions that early in his career, he had used some leverage. Munger's perspective highlights the importance of assessing the appropriateness of leverage based on the perceived certainty and quality of investment opportunities, even if it goes against conventional financial wisdom. But, but if the opportunity is great enough, the logical answer is 100%, or maybe 200%. Somebody else wrote in where, where you said the three things that ruin people are ladies, liquor, and leverage. So why would you use leverage when you You're know right. that's one of the three things that can destroy somebody? Well, I used a little on my way up, and so did Warren, by the way. The Buffett Partnership used leverage regularly every, every year of its life. What Warren would do was he would buy a bunch of stocks, and then he'd borrow in and those stocks, and he'd buy into these, they used to call it event arbitrage, liquidations, mergers, and so forth. And that was not, didn't go up and down with the market. That was like an independent banking business. And Ben Graham's name for that, those, that type of investment, he called them Jewish treasury bills. And it always amused me that that's what he would call them. But Warren used leverage to buy Jewish treasury bills when on the way up, and it worked fine for him. Berkshire has stock in Activision Blizzard. Mm. And you can argue that that's, whether that'll go through or not, I don't know, but that's a Jewish treasury bill. Arbitrage? The arbitrage play on Activision? Well, yes, we've had arbitrage. I mean, but we, we, we sort of stopped doing it because it's such a crowded place. But here's, here's Little Berkshire doing it again in Activision Blizzard. And, and Munger using a little leverage at the Daily Journal Corporation. So is, is you leverage... You can use that leverage to buy BYD. You can argue that's the best thing I've ever done for the Daily Journal. So is, is leverage the, the least evil of the three L's? I think most people should avoid it, but maybe not everybody need, need play by those rules. I have a friend who says, the young man knows the rules and the old man knows the exceptions. In conclusion, Charlie Munger's willingness to embrace leverage, albeit sparingly and under unique circumstances, underscores the idea that investment strategies are not one-size-fits-all. While he and Warren Buffett typically steer clear of leverage, Munger acknowledges that there can be exceptions when extraordinary opportunities arise. Ultimately, Munger's financial wisdom reminds us that in the world of investing, knowing both the rules and the exceptions can be a valuable asset.